Free Presbyterian Church, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you with us today as we spend 15 minutes around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all His fullness. And this is Leslie Curran saying hello and welcome to the program. I'm delighted you're tuning in once again as the Reverend John Greer, minister of Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church, is back with us to Let the Bible Speak. Welcome once again to another gospel program. It is my great privilege to come with the Word of God to you, and I pray that today the Lord will bless you richly. Now today I want to bring your attention to a verse that is found in Judges chapter 6 and the verse number 23, where we have these words, The Lord said unto him, that is unto Gideon, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. These words were spoken as they indicate to allay the fears of Gideon, fears that arose because of the supernatural event that he had just witnessed. An angel of the Lord had appeared to Gideon, had been sent to visit him, and had brought to him a message that was of great importance in his life at that time. As a consequence of this divine visitation, Gideon was filled with great fear, and therefore the Lord spoke to calm his soul. And these are the words that were brought to him, Peace be unto thee, fear not. Thou shalt not die. These were words that were designed to set at rest Gideon's heart and enable him to go on with the work that the Lord had given him to do. But in these words, there was a a revelation of gospel truth, the great gospel truth of peace with God through Christ and through his work, both in his life and in his death. Many are troubled at the thought of meeting with God, at the thought of appearing before him, at death, and of standing before him at the great day of judgment. Is your heart troubled today? Is there fear in your soul as you think about the end of life's journey, going out into eternity to meet God, to answer for your life, to appear before him? Well, here are words that are designed to bring peace to the soul. Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. There is here the thought of the provision of peace. It says, peace be unto thee. And these words are indicative of the fact that there is peace for sinful men. This pronouncement of peace was essentially a promise, and the gospel uh, could not and does not promise that which does not exist. Therefore, the promise of peace signifies the provision of peace. Here in our text, therefore, in which the Lord spoke to Gideon, there are uh, words that remind us of the provision of peace. In the Bible, the provision of peace for sinners is clearly revealed to us through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Acts 10 verse 36 says, Peace through Jesus Christ. Words that signify that peace with God is channeled through Christ and is provided through Christ. Here in this setting in Judges chapter 6, Gideon has asked the Lord for a sign, a visible sign, to confirm what had been said to him. And that word for sign in verse 18 can be translated appointment of fire. And then the word for present in verse 18 is often used in the Old Testament with regard to what is offered in sacrifice. So Gideon was seeking for the Lord's acceptance of his offering by fire, and this is what happened. In verse 21 it says that the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes and there arose fire up out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And here was a portrayal of the acceptance of the sacrifice by the Lord. And that's a very vital thing. The sacrifice was a foreshadowing of Christ's sacrifice. There was a kid of the goats killed. It was sacrificed. Its blood was shed. There was also mingled with it cakes that were unleavened, uh, cakes of unleavened bread. And this signifies the purity of the Lord Jesus, who, when he came to die, was offered up by 
uh, offered up to his father was himself without sin. So peace with God comes through the death of one who is without sin and who became sin for men. And only on that basis can a man, a woman, a young person find peace with God. It is through the offering of Christ of himself unto the Father. This offering was consumed by fire. And the symbol here is the symbol of the wrath of God, because the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ, and thereby God signaled that he accepted Christ's offering and that he was satisfied with Christ's offering. He raised him from the dead to show that the work was done, that all was well, and that peace had been secured through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is clearly here this provision of peace. And then there's the proclamation of peace. It says, The Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. These words indicate that there was peace for Gideon, being extended to him and granted to him, it was being proclaimed to him. And therefore there is the proclamation of peace. There is the preaching of peace by Jesus Christ. And the great message that goes forth is right here. Fear not, thou shalt not die. You see, because Christ has made peace with God on behalf of men, then those who trust in Jesus Christ will not die. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that the work of Jesus Christ has conquered death. That means that when a man trusts in Christ and he comes to leave this world, his death, his physical death, is simply the means by which he is taken home to heaven. That's what death is for a Christian. A Christian's death is not to be feared. There's nothing morbid about it. Oh, yes, it may be sad, and we miss the loved one who passes away. Those are natural reactions and feelings. But at the same time, in that believer's death, there is no sting. There is nothing that is to be dreaded, because the Lord Jesus Christ has taken the sting away. He has overcome and triumphed, and therefore, for the one who dies in Christ, there is no there is no, nothing to fear about that physical death, and therefore there's nothing to fear about the future. You see, those who die without the Lord then face what the Bible calls the second death, which is eternal in its duration and never ends. It is to come under the wrath of God forever and to die beneath the stroke of his judgment. You see, my friend, this is a very real thing. Yes, there's physical death. There is uh, that act of leaving this world, which all of us must pass through. But then there's something beyond the, uh, the earthly plane. There is the heavenly. There is the eternal realm. And there is the awful darkness and the awful blackness of a lost eternity. And this is what's awaiting those who are yet in their sin. If they die in that manner, if they die in that condition, then they will be lost forevermore. They will perish under the wrath of God. Now, these are serious things. You have every, uh, you would do well today to be fearful about the future, to be fearful and filled with a, a feeling of, of the dreadfulness of dying in your sin, because if you do, you will be lost forevermore. I want you to understand this. I want you to see this. Sin is not a trivial thing. Sin is serious, solemn, brings terrible consequences. It will cause you to lose your soul. You will die. You will perish. You will be under the wrath of God forevermore if you die as you are now living. And therefore, come to Christ. You need to seek the Lord. You need to possess this peace. And you'll notice here what Gideon did uh, when he came into possession of peace. He signified it by raising up an altar and by calling that altar Jehovah Shalom, which means Jehovah Peace or Jehovah Sends Peace. The title signifies that the Lord himself is our peace. And when a sinner has Christ, he possesses peace and will enjoy that peace forevermore. And Gideon went on to worship the Lord, indicating that he had peace with God, that he knew he could approach God through the merits of the promised Savior. All that he saw that day was a revelation of Christ, and he went and he worshipped God 
Upon the ground of what he had seen, his fear was gone. He knew that death for him had been conquered. He knew that Jehovah Shalom was his peace. Today I urge you to think about these matters. Uh, Hear the words of God. Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Here is great gospel truth. There is peace for sinners through Christ. Peace through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And those who will rest in Jesus Christ will certainly come into possession of that wondrous peace and enter into the enjoyment of all that there is in Jesus Christ and be saved for time and for eternity. You must seek the Lord. You must uh, come to him by faith. This is God's way, God's means of being saved. It's through faith. It is through repentance. It's through turning from your sin to the Savior. And if you will not take that step, then peace cannot be yours and will not be yours, and you will perish under the wrath of God forever. But today, I urge you, just where you are right now, to bow before the Lord, cry to him, trust him as your Savior, and you will be heard, you will be welcomed, you will be received. May you take that step, and may God bless his word to your heart and to your soul, even this day. You've been listening to Let the Bible Speak. If we can be of any further spiritual help, we invite you to contact us via our website at www.balaminafpc.org, on our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash balaminafpc, or via our phone number 2565-2895. You may hear Mr. Greer preach each Lord's Day here in Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We assure you of a warm welcome at all of the services and look forward to having you with us. Thank you for listening today. May the Lord richly bless you. And don't forget to tune in next week at the same time as once again we turn to the Scriptures and let the Bible speak.